am I stuck in a pattern without without realizing it? Suddenly you have uh, an, a heart attack at a young age. Suddenly people are like, oh my God. You drop everything yeah. and you change your lifestyle. The week before Jane Tu released, nobody could have given a damn if I walked down the street. The week after it releases, suddenly there are people chasing my car. I reached a place where I said, I'm not okay. I'm not healthy. I'm not strong. I'm not capable. The hard thing is looking at the broken parts of yourself and trying to fix them and engaging with that day on day on day. Mm -hmm. Just every day I'm just going to crawl forward a quarter inch. I'm going to crawl forward a quarter inch a day. Am I bumping into a wall that I can't see? Most people have a sense of, you can't fall behind in the race. Yeah, it is a race. Is it? You, you, you possibly <laughs> also read that I cut my own hair. I did. I did. That was How a, does that work? You just stand in front of the mirror and like... I use two mirrors. <laughs> you and your partner, Lekha, have perhaps rented Karan's house. Like, I was... <laughs> How do you handle that? You're very cute. Your acting is perfect. Uh, you should join again the industry. Imran, it is so so good to see you. It's great to see you too. It's been uh, it's been far too long. I have vague memories of Mehboob Studio. Karti Bati must be twenty fifteen. Karti Bati, yeah, it was twenty fifteen. So that's coming up on nine years ago now. Yeah. Uh, so I guess that would have been the last time that we uh, we spoke officially. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you look great. Thank you. Nice to you. <laughs> I guess uh, where where we've kind of. Uh, Lucked out in the, in this area. We're, we're aging like fine wine. Yeah, that that that's the <laughs> attempt. So 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 what what what's your thing? You're hydrating well. You're. <laughs> yes, I am hydrating well. <laughs> Sun, sunscreen, vitamin C. Of course, all of it, all of it. Imran, I want to start with the question that's on everyone's mind, right? Topmost. You said um, that you're reading. You don't have a plan. You're reading scripts. Yeah. Uh, but you said this about six to five months ago, like at the India Film Project thing? Yeah, I guess that was that October. October. Yeah. yeah. Right? So, as, has, have you liked anything? I mean, that hashtag, Lotau Imran, <laughs> when does it become a reality? I'm, I'm still grappling with the whole thing, frankly. This whole thing has been uh, sudden and kind of unplanned. Uh, I wasn't quite prepped for the idea of, okay, I'm going to re-engage with public life, uh, re-engage with the film industry, restart looking at, at, at work. So all, all of it kind of came about unexpectedly. Uh, since then, I have slowly started to re-engage with, uh, with, with, with the film industry. Uh, I've started to have those creative conversations with people about what what could we do? What should we do? What are you interested in? What what am I interested in? <coughs> uh, and I've read a couple of things that I've liked, uh, and I'm 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 sitting with uh, with, with these folks to try, try and develop it. I, I thus far I have not been offered anything that is absolutely ready to go that I have connected with. Certainly there have been things that have shown up and said, "Here's the thing. How about this?" And perhaps I, I have not uh, clicked and, and, and connected. So the things that have resonated with me have been things that are a little, a little, little more kacha, a little less developed and ne need some work before we can actually turn them into something. So that's the stage that I'm, I'm at. You're baking. I'm baking. I'm, 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 I'm cooking. I'm in pre-pre-production. You know, um Let's talk about what you're resonating with, right? Because in, in the interview that you did with Vogue, you talked about how in the early days, in your 20s, you sort of automatically gravitated towards characters who kind of were where you were. Yeah. Right? So, Rats in Janitu or, or uh, Jay in I Hate Love Stories or Rahul in Ek Mein Aur Ek Tu, all men kind of finding their way, you know. Uh, Boys finding their way into manhood. Exactly. Yeah. So, exactly. And you said that now I'm, you know, I have, a, I have a child, I've been through a divorce, I've had a career setback. So I have to find things that speak to 
where I am in life. Yeah. You know, where are you in life? Like, what what is that point right now? Uh, so my last film release was Kati Bati, which released just uh, when I was 31 years old. Today I'm 41. Effectively, I spent my 20s uh, working and building and setting up a career. Uh, and in my 30s, that ended up being not the thing that I that I that I felt like focusing on, or that I saw the need to focus on. Uh, life took me in another direction and as such effectively these past 10 years i have spent kind of grappling with the larger questions of who am i what do i want to do what do i want to be uh, and having uh, started off on a film career at a very young age it would seem logical that that's just what you follow through with and you just keep doing that yeah. A series of life circumstances led me to a place where I was not getting the fulfillment or the purpose or the the value perhaps that uh, that that I was seeking uh, and I guess somewhere I was unafraid of the idea of saying, "Okay, if not this." What if something entirely else? What if something entirely different? Uh, once again, uh, it has been my tremendous privilege and good fortune that working in the film industry, I was financially secure. Mm. These are, uh, this is a privilege not afforded to many people. Uh, but since I was in that position, I said, okay, I don't have to worry about money. Mm. I am financially safe, secure, comfortable, my family, my needs, my, you know, the roof over my head, all these things are taken care of. What else? What, 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 who do I want to be? How do I want to approach my life? What am I seeking? Uh, and that was not coming from the film industry. Uh, and I needed to reassess, reevaluate. So did you, did you, Imran, fall out of love with films or did you fall out of love with the film industry? Uh, working professionally in the film industry, you exist within an ecosystem which you would have seen uh, of those who are who uh, are your immediate co-workers, and everyone who moves outwards. There is publicity, PR. Uh, there's there's PR. There's management. There is an entire ecosystem. That, that comes up around an actor. Uh, and everyone who exists within that ecosystem is primed to consider everything purely from a monetary perspective. Uh, how much money do you earn for your film? How much money does your film earn? Uh, how much money do you earn from endorsements? How much money do you earn for an, for an appearance? You show up at a shopping mall and yeah. cut a ribbon. Uh, and that ultimately starts to become the only metric by which any of us judge anything. Uh, and existing with that, within that environment, I started to buy into it more and more. Uh, so that the only, the only value system then becomes bottom dollar. How many rupees? How many dollars? How many days? That's it. And that was never the reason that I was interested in films. I grew up absolutely, absolutely enamored with cinema. You know, I, I, I have deep, deep, deep love for movies as a viewer. And as a maker, I, I love every part of it. I love to write. I love pre-production. I love sitting with set designers. I love sitting with costume designers. I love being on set. I, I absolutely every part of the process of making a film, I adore. Uh, and somewhere I started to myself buy into the, the, the notion that if you don't earn this many dollars, there is, there is no further value to it. Uh, which, which is not a healthy way to approach cinema. Uh, 
and ultimately it took the joy out of it for me you've also said that uh, i think on instagram that it broke your heart when katti batti didn't work so was failure the immediate trigger for stepping back uh yes well at that moment i didn't consider it in that way and i never i never kind of said okay on this day i have i'm done. I, i'm i'm done i quit yeah. uh i i in, instead it it was kind of a process of a week becoming a month a month becoming three and becoming a year and a year becoming two where i said okay i won't do this because my heart's not in it so i was attached to uh i want at least one if not two projects that were being developed you know uh that i would have acted in right after katti batti uh but as we went through the process more and more my my heart disconnected and disconnected and disconnected and i said you know i i can't i can't do this thing i don't believe it uh so it 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 was more about that it was it it was not wanting to engage with something that didn't feel absolutely right uh and as as time has gone on and i've i've looked back at at these films again as as you say with instagram i've been relooking at the films yeah, i've yeah, been and posting uh, about it yeah, yeah yeah and re uh, kind of relooking at them through the eyes of an audience and when 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 someone will message me today 10 12 years after the fact and say i i saw break ke baad this is a, this is a 15 year old movie uh that was a commercial disappointment yeah but someone remembers it today uh it 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 holds value it holds meaning for someone and that reminded me of oh yeah that's the point that's why you do a thing you 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 don't measure it by weekend box office yeah you measure it by emotional resonance over time yeah absolutely and and i'm going to i'm going to come to that i have a theory about it but first i have to ask you you've also talked about how you felt a little damaged inside and you said that that's when i think march 2017 is when you said that you sought out therapy and you have kept march you, 13th march 13th um and you've kept it four times a week you've kept every single appointment uh, i think it's no that 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 that's not true i have i have i have missed uh, <laughs> you, you I, missed I, a few i i i missed my share it's part it's part of the process you you have setbacks and you you get back on that's right but i think it's important for people to hear imran what role has therapy played in your life uh you know i i have never had the uh, the stigma and the baggage associated with 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 mental health that uh, i guess is prevalent in a lot of the world uh my 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 mother is a is a working psychoanalyst uh, and as such from fairly earlier on i was exposed to the world of mental health uh and it was kind of normalized and destigmatized very much like any kind of medicine you go to the dentist you go to, you go to the you go to an ent to, to to me it is it's all kind of part of the same thing uh so i did not have a hurdle to overcome uh the hurdle in fact that i guess one would have that uh, most people have is recognizing that oh wait am i am i stuck in a pattern without without realizing it am i you know am i am i bumping into a wall that i can't see uh so to to, to catch that is is uh, is tricky but having become cognizant of that uh having become aware of that and then saying okay if i'm not feeling strong i'm not feeling capable uh how do i address this how do i approach this and where do i prioritize this within within my life if someone were to have a health scare you know like a physical health scare suddenly you have uh, an a heart attack at a young age suddenly people are like oh my god you drop everything yeah. and you change your lifestyle like i'm going to exercise i'm going to diet 
you know, drink kale juice and you know, <laughs> whatever yeah, those whatever things it are. Takes. Whatever yeah. it takes. Yeah. Same also for mental health. That's basically how I approached it. I had a mental health scare where I reached I reached a place where I said, I'm not okay. I'm not healthy. I'm not strong. I'm not capable. And there is a version of myself that I see, the mental self image that you have. You're like, this is who I think of myself as. And I realized that I was not that. Uh, I was much more fearful. I was, uh, I was, I was scared and anxious and I felt, uh, yeah, I, 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 I did not feel capable and secure. But in my head, I'm like, I'm, it, I see myself as a capable, strong, confident person. But I was not actually engaging with the world in that way. That disconnect is finally what kind of led me to say, okay, I, I need to address this. So yeah, that was, I guess, 2016, 2017 that I started to make that my priority. And I said, where I thought, okay, I don't have to, I, uh, I can put my work down for now. It is not my job to be an actor. I can be an actor if I want. I cannot be an actor if I, do, if I don't want. These things are optional. Fixing myself is not optional. Yeah. Yeah. But those years, Imran, um, 2015, post, post the film, you almost completely disappeared, right? You, you made the short film uh, Mission Mars. That was 2018. Yeah. Yeah. And... Then until like literally last year when you resurfaced on, on Instagram, uh, there was no sign of you. Uh, we didn't see you at all. What were those years like? And, and do you remember if there was sort of, if there were days that were very challenging and how did you cope? There were, there were many, many uh, deeply challenging days. Uh, I... I removed myself from the film industry and, and from this world because I, uh, I was I was not able to engage with any part of that. Uh, the the trappings and the baggage associated with with that life and with, with all of that, uh, it's difficult to navigate at the best of times. Yeah. Uh, you know the 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 strongest, healthiest, most well balanced individual will still face hurdles navigating this world. It's, it, it's complicated. It's brutal. Yeah. Uh, and I was able to recognize that I'm, I'm not in a condition to engage with that and to, to, to deal with any of those things. Uh, and so I dropped all parts of it. I said, I, I am not that person anymore. Uh, any of the the, the 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 trappings associated with that, I shed, uh, and I still continue to engage in that way. I don't have uh, I don't have any publicity people. I don't have PR people. I don't have agents, managers, uh, nothing, and nobody. Uh, I dropped all of that because I didn't want to engage through that lens. Mm. Uh, I wanted to. It's 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 kind of a thing of saying. What, what are the things that you actually need in your life? Uh, what are the things that are valuable to you? What are the things that are important? What, what can you do without? Uh, and once you know that you can do without these things and that they don't hold power over you, they don't hold sway over you, it's then a lot easier. You can give out, you can take it or leave it. But Imran, it's, it's such a seductive space as well right it is brutal it's complex but it's also there are very very few people who can walk away from it was that hard no not at all when you were done you were just done because i was i have ne i've never been enamored with it mm. the uh, peripherals is not what brought you there in the first place i've i've never been uh, very impressed with stardom uh, I've never been impressed with myself. Uh, I have never uh, valued all of these ephemeral parts of the thing because 
it's just that it's it's dust it's <laughs> It, 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 the, the, the way the wind blows, yeah. you're hot, you're cold, you're, and like, but I'm still me, you know, I, I've, I've always been this person. The week before Jane Tu released, nobody could have given a damn if I walked down the street. The week after it releases, suddenly there are people chasing my car. A, a film doesn't do well, the same industry people who were, you know, chomping at the bit to show up and, and, and pat me on the back suddenly are like, you're, you're, you're out of season, you're, 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 you're the wrong kind of flavor. Yeah. So, how do you value these things? Uh, I was never very taken with it. So for me, it was always easy to say, it, it's dust, drop it. The actual value is the thing that you believe in, the thing that you love doing. I love to be on set. I love to make movies. I love to tell stories. And I've been fortunate to have uh, to have gotten the opportunity to make stories that have resonated with people and that 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 people will still tell me hey I, I love that film of yours yeah that is the value the value of someone who has seen a film and says you told my story or you you touched my heart did you miss being on set yeah but never enough to sort of say, let me give it a shot? Not in those years. Uh, in, in those years, I was just not capable of, of doing these things. I was barely capable of, uh, of, of functioning. You know, uh, when, when, you're, when, when you're tackling deep, severe, uh, uh, deep and severe depression, just getting up in the morning and brushing your teeth, then taking a shower is a monumental task. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where analysis helped. Uh, because I had steady appointments, I had a place to go. If I did not have that, there are many days that I would not have gotten out of bed. Sunrise to sunset, you can just stay in bed. But I had to go to analysis. That means I have to get up, I have to take a shower, I have to put on clothes and tie up my shoes and I have to travel to the place. It got me out of bed, it got me out of the house, it kept me moving. And for a long time, that was as much as I was capable of. Mm -hmm. I would go to analysis and come back and that was it. I was like wiped out and done. Uh, bit by bit, bit by bit, I have become stronger and have become more capable of stepping out into the world, of engaging with, with, with life. But I, wasn't, I, couldn't have, I couldn't have done it back then. What has this uh, re-engaging been like? I mean, the film industry is a very different place. <laughs> Even in 10 years, you must have seen that. What's it been like to just dheere dheere come back? It's not all that different. No? Has anything uh, surprised you? No. <laughs> That's the thing, you know. Uh, it's, what's that thing you know, they say, same, same but different? <laughs> Sure, we've, we've, we've got all the streamers now, you know, so suddenly we've got Netflix and Amazon and all, the, all, all this, this digital space. And I will say, it's awesome the way that they have thrown the doors open yeah. to all manner of content creators, uh, the, the, the kind of stories that we tell, all of that stuff. It's, it's awesome. But there is a, <laughs> the, 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 the core of the thing is still, who's hot today? <laughs> yes. How much money can I get for this? And th th that part of it, they they dress it up a little differently, you know, here and there. But th th that core, I, I don't think has changed. I don't think it will. Yeah, yeah. I want to come to that. But before, my thesis about you. Um, so you said, Imran, that you're amazed at how much people still love you, how much they talk about your films. I mean, there are people who come to our office only because you're here. It's, it is, yeah, because there is the conventional wisdom, if you're out of sight, out of mind. But you're not. That's what I'm saying. And at the time that I was, uh, I was working, we were still, everything was still largely dominated by legacy media, mm. which is television channels, which had, you know, programming, 7.30 p.m. is when the show Appointment, comes. Appointment, yeah, viewing. Yeah. So we had television. You had newspapers and magazines. Yeah. Uh, 
you know it was all legacy media and as social media has started to come in and as that it started to dominate more and more everyone has their own little soapbox to stand on and everyone is generating their own content and putting their own content out there through the day so then within that kind of uh, an environment one assumes that everyone else is putting out so much stuff they are they they're showing up at your doorstep in your pocket knocking on your screen saying hi would you like Look to watch me, me do, yeah <laughs> yeah hi yeah. right, guys you can watch me do push ups now correct you know so within that world for someone like me who is then not only not on legacy media also not on social media one assumes that you will just disappear and i did my best genuinely to disappear i did my best to disappear i did not engage via those threads uh you know how desperately people cling on to the 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 the, the spotlight yeah uh i didn't i did exactly the opposite of what you are supposed to do to stay relevant yet here I, here we are and here i am okay so here's my theory about that yeah you know imran the the your most successful films right uh, all the rom coms uh, you kind of in a way redefined masculinity with these characters they were like sweet sincere bumbling men as you said not even men boys becoming men when you tried the kind of more more uh, old school masculinity in whatever luck kidnap once upon a time in mumbai dobara that didn't land what landed was those other men yeah. right uh, and i think imran you were woke before we knew the word right you were involved Seems with gay rights yeah, yeah you you filed i remember a pil when the drinking age was going to go to 25 yeah. right my thesis is that you are more of these times than those times i always felt like i was it sounds egotistical to say ahead of the curve uh but through those years that i was looking at uh, stories and trying to engage it was always with the idea of trying to be the voice of a new younger uh generation you know, yeah. A, a, yeah yeah uh the industry our country all of it i was trying to be part of a that and saying okay we've all grown up watching cinema of the early 2000s of the 90s of the 80s of the 70s how how much to what extent can i bring my thought and my sensibilities uh and my voice into the stories that i'm telling and try to be part of the next wave that was always the idea and by and large uh there was There was there, there was not a lot of that being done. Yeah. Uh, films like Kidnap and such very much leaned into the classical style, uh, and those were often the films where I had a level of discomfort with. I don't quite know how to engage with this scene because it doesn't make sense to me. But it's scripted that way, I guess. You, you know, you, you, yeah. you try your best. Yeah. uh so th- th- there was always kind of a uh, a dissonance there uh that i was trying to overcome i was trying to find a a way to fit into those worlds like i i i'm not convinced about this world i don't i don't buy into it but i'm i'm trying is this guy's a big director i guess he knows what he's talking about but you know the guys that did work were all those non toxic men and those were all uh first time filmmakers <laughs> yeah. you know whether it was jane tu yeah or break ke baad or i hate love stories or teddy belly mere brother ki dulhan ek main aur ek tu all of these were directed by guys who were making their first film guys who were about my age at about that place in life and who were trying to tell a story that came from them yeah and maybe take the narrative forward in yeah. some small way yeah yeah so The, uh, the 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 times that I try to do legacy films, you know, with you know established directors, kidnap once upon a time, these were 
filmmakers from another generation. Correct. Uh, and I think we, we, we never quite got in sync. Yeah, yeah. You know, Iman, I don't know if you remember this, but you were actually the first person who ever spoke to me about social media being toxic. Uh, yeah. So, so it's amazing, and I have such a clear memory of this. Um, I got onto Twitter now X um, like 2010, and I, you know, the first few years were great, and and I met uh, Roger Ebert, the great American film critic, yeah. on Twitter, which eventually became a physical meeting in Cannes, and I was like, oh my god, like Janam Safalogya, you know, it was that vibe, and I remember you saying to me that. Um, you uh, were on Twitter and, and you looked at your phone in between shots and you said there was so much negativity and they were coming at you for your acting. And you said that it actually impacted on my performance in the next scene that I did, so I'm off it. And at that time, I didn't understand. You know, I was like, but how, what? Like, and now I completely get what you were talking about. There is an emotional residue that remains. When you uh, when you connect, when you engage in that way, uh, and social media, uh, it 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 does this thing. I'm I'm now very very sensitized to it. I I I can perceive like a physiological sense. Really? Yeah. Uh, so I, I was an early adopter of Twitter. Uh, I signed on in 2009, uh, and I deleted my Twitter account in 2010. <laughs> so as as an uh, early abandoner as well. But I remember the whole cycle of the, the and there is genuinely, and, and at this point we have a better understanding of it. Uh, these are digital drugs. Uh, the, the addiction and the reward response, all of this, uh, it, it does stimulate a physiological response in us. So I remember, you know, the feeling of, you know, on Twitter, I would think of a, of a very witty, funny little uh, thing to put onto Twitter. I'm like, I've got a great joke for Twitter. So then you open it up, and as you start to type it, there is this excitement which you feel in this in the pit of the stomach of, this is going to be so funny. People are going to love They're it. They're all going to love it. Yeah. And it's going to get so many retweets and so many likes and so many ad comments, and you have this building anticipation of how awesome it's going to be, yeah. and then you post. And then you said, and you wait, and the feeling of, I have to give it a few few minutes because Correct. some people have to ga gather it, and then they like it, and then they write it, and they go ha ha ha, and they they, they that entire physiological uh, feeling. I started to become aware of it. I was like, oh, I'm I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling excitement at the prospect of how many people will will like my tweet. And then you go on, and there is the high of. Oh, this has landed and everyone finds it funny, or nobody got this, and in fact they thought my spelling was wrong, so now it's it, it's bombed and you're like, oh man, it's really shit. That whole experience, uh, I started to really become aware and conscious of it and say, oh, I'm I'm not enjoying this. You know, the, the, and I'm doing this in the middle of a day where I may be on set and I'm uh, I'm, I'm 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 trying to remain in a particular headspace. For, for the scene we're shooting, or I'm supposed to go in and meet with someone about another thing, and half and there's this entire residue from that thing, yeah. and that is now influencing the way that I'm interacting with this person. Uh, so th all of that I became very conscious and very aware of, and said, "Oh no, I, I don't want this residue. I don't want this experience." You wrote Imran a piece on why you're not on social media in 2013. I did. Yes, you did, and and I want to. I, I think it might be. Yeah. Yeah, and and you know what's interesting? I, so there was of course all the stuff about social media, but here's what you said about PR, and and this is a little long, but I found this fascinating. You said so all of us in the industry open up the papers and say, "Man, Shah Rukh Khan has built eight pack abs." Oh shit! He got paid rupees fifteen crore for this film. Clearly, this was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> he is not working for 15 crore for a film. Uh, then ah, you said, then I start to feel insecure. I tell my PR guys to put out a story saying I'm getting 35 for 15, uh, 35 crore for 15 endorsements. But the rest of the world doesn't give a damn. They open up page three, look at the party pictures, see which actress is showing a good amount of cleavage and move on. 
we've turned this PR into something that is important because it's important to us personally. It's actually actors taking shots at each other, directors and producers trying to one-up each other. We're all in this one little bubble. You take a step out of the bubble and look around and you realize that nobody gives a damn. Bollywood is a tiny blip. We're in the bubble and we lose perspective. Step back for a moment. We're making movies. We're just telling entertaining stories. We want people to come in, watch a film, enjoy it and go out. You don't need to treat it like international espionage. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent true, okay? But also, Iman, amplified now to the power of a hundred, right? With social media, with pop culture. It, it's mind-boggling to me. Yeah, how are you handling it? By disconnecting. I, I'm not there. I'm just, I, I'm just not there. I, I, so Instagram, I don't have the app. Then? I post from my laptop. So, because I mean, I'm writing captions as well. I can't type correct. that entire thing out on correct, my phone. Correct. My and long out. ones. Yeah. Huh. So, I type it out on my laptop. I go to www.instagram.com. Did you guys know this? You can use Instagram from a, from a laptop. <laughs> so, I huh. log on from my laptop and I upload pictures from my desktop and I type the thing in and I post. I don't follow anyone. I don't, I don't have the app. So, I don't consume Instagram. Uh, I don't use WhatsApp. Yeah. Uh, I start, I, I, I kind of eschew all of these very, very fast digital uh, media communications things because I, I simply cannot handle it. Uh, the, the, the pace of, the pace of it and the, uh, how do I put this? The, the emotional graph of the thing is simply too much for me to, to engage with. Uh, but, but Imran, like now that you are engaging more, right? I And this is random. I saw some story on, on how uh, you and your partner Lekha have perhaps rented Karan's house. Like, <laughs> <I was, laughs> how do you handle that? Uh, again, it's one of those things that I have never fully been able to wrap my head around. The notion of celebrity and fame and the, the, the idea that people follow you around literally and report on you and comment on you and all of that. Uh, I've always found it to be a little odd. Uh, I've, 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 I've had enough time also uh, to kind of deconstruct the notion of fame and celebrity and all of this. Yeah. And it's weird. It's just weird that we have opinions on people far, far removed from us. You know, the idea that I can sit over here and have an opinion about Timothy Chalamet, who I've never actually met. <laughs> but I have very strong opinions about how he dresses and who he dates. It very, I, makes me very, very angry. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird. But you're, you're zen-like about it. Yeah, because as I say, it, 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 it doesn't fully make sense to me. Uh, particularly when there are so many people who want the thing hmm. like I'm, I'm not trying to engage with that yeah someone finds it interesting to report on me someone is interested in reading it out there but it's all if a tree falls in the forest and no one is around to hear it so it, 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 it is that thing that for so many years because I was so disconnected I, I literally would not be aware if someone is saying something about me. I traveled a lot. I was out of the country quite a bit. If I happen to be in another country and something is written about me in the paper and I never hear about it, did it actually happen? What, what does it do? Nobody in my life actually comes to me and says, hey, what about this? It, it all happens amongst other people. Yeah. Someone who I don't know reports on me 
in their publication. Ten people whom I don't know either read it, and then they discuss it among. But none of it, act, none of it is actually coming into my life. How do you engage? What, what do you do with that thing? Yeah. What do you do about two people talking about you in another country, and you can't hear them? But here, but when you now, are you are you disengaging? Are you able to do that? Yeah, because I, I'm since I'm not com, uh, consuming any of this stuff. Yeah. Uh, my my, I I kind of live my life basis. What is actually happening? Mm. Who are the people who are actually in in front of me? Who are actually reaching out and touching me and saying, "Hi, Imran, let's have a conversation about a project. Very interesting. Excellent. Let's talk." Those things are real. Uh, the rest of it happens. It happens around you. I, I care not for it. You know, Imran, but I'm also amazed at how honestly uh, you are expressing yourself on Instagram, which otherwise, for most people, is an instrument of projection. Everyone's trying to put their happiest. Most glamorous and glorious life out there, right? And and here's what you're talking about. So so I'm going to read out something you've written, and this is with a picture. This is the caption with a picture where you're pouring water on yourself, right? From the sets of Ekna or Ekdu. Correct. And you said, "Sorry about the silence. When you've lived so long in darkness, the sunshine can feel unbearably bright at first. I've been flooded with so many messages of love, support, and encouragement that it felt weird, unnatural." I couldn't absorb that much positivity, so instead I went looking for the ugly words, the hurtful ones that sound more like the voice in my head, because that feels more familiar to me. I checked Reddit, the comment sections of news articles, wherever I could find words sharp enough. There I was poking and slicing away, trying to feel normal, quote unquote. But some of the edges of the words seemed less sharp, the tips less pointy. They weren't drawing blood the way they used to. They just didn't work anymore. And I think I know why. We all have scars, old wounds that still ache, but love heals. Love is empowering and uplifting. And if you're fortunate enough to receive the kind of love that I have, I think it starts to fill in those scars. It covers you in a layer of protective armor. I love that. That's so beautiful. You may never fully grasp the extent to which your love empowers me, but know that I'm grateful. You make me feel 304.8 cm tall. <laughs> How that, do you how do you get this honest? Uh, it's easier. We have, by and large, most of us, developed the habit of wearing masks, and we wear different masks with different people and in different scenarios. uh you know when you show up over here you are the good employee and you show up over here and you are the good son and you show up over here you are the good student and whatever the th- those things are uh and my journey has brought me to a place where the effort of wearing that mask and saying the thing is more effort than i'm able to make make it's more difficult for me to do that than it is to just say hey here's here's the truth it's just it's just easier uh this you 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 had asked me earlier on about was it difficult to walk away from this thing yeah. uh is it difficult to be this this exposed and this honest Here's the funny thing. These are some of the easiest things that I have done. Because the other things are actually harder. The hard thing is looking at the broken parts of yourself and trying to fix them and engaging with that day on day on day. And saying mm. just every day I'm just going to crawl forward a quarter inch. I'm going to crawl forward a quarter inch a day. Those are the hard things. taking a step back from a world that you are not able to really handle is easy that was the easy way out speaking my truth and uh, saying these uh, acknowledging these parts of myself is the easy way out 
it would be harder for me to show up and say, hey guys, here I am once again. That would be very, very difficult. This is easier. You also, um, Imran, walked away from this palatial house that you lived in, which I know because at one point, Amir had a Diwali party there. Oh. And I remember that lawn in Bandra, in Pali Hill. And I remember being struck by real estate envy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and thinking like, oh my God, could life get better than this, right? But you don't live there anymore. You live in an apartment and you said in Vogue that you have like three forks and three plates and... So for the past five years, uh, just around the time that I separated, uh, I moved into this space where I have lived for the past five years. And I started by moving into what was basically an, an empty space. and. I started bringing things into the space basis my requirement. Uh, I, I had a television because I like to watch movies. And I had a sofa. This exactly sofa this one? In, in, I, <laughs> I in, love in, that. <laughs> in, in blue, but uh, yeah. A little Easter egg for everyone watching. Uh, and then bit by bit, I started to bring in things only basis, what do I actually need? Uh, I didn't have any live-in staff. Uh, I had a person who would come in every alternate day to do the heavy cleaning. But I bought myself one of those Dyson uh, vacuum cleaners. And I said I would clean myself. Uh, if I have only three plates, one per meal, breakfast, lunch, dinner, there's only three plates to wash. So how big can the mess get? If I go through the entire day and I don't wash anything, there's still only three plates. The mess can't get any bigger. Uh, so th th this, this, is, this is in fact true. That is how I've lived for these past five years with only things that I absolutely really needed uh, and not a whole lot more. Uh, again, it was about separating from those external trappings, the things which you're told that you want them and you start to believe that you want this or you need this or you deserve this or whatever this is. And it was about saying, okay, what do I actually need? What do I actually want? What, what do I actually get value from? Uh, and it turns out that a lot, of those, a, a lot of the things which we perceive as being very, very valuable actually are not. Uh, so yeah, that, that, that is in fact, I, I found that to be a, a much easier existence for these, these past few years. Uh, I, I wanted my space. I wanted to be able to manage and run it myself. Again, that was a sense of, uh, can I do all of this stuff without all of these external trappings? Uh, and you cooked yourself? Breakfast. Uh, I, I, lunch and dinner I got from, from my mom's place. <laughs> So I, I, I can't lay claim to, the, to all of the cooking. <laughs> I'd, 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 I'd fry eggs. <laughs> hey, that's not bad. And, and, and I, I, can, I can make a really good uh, spaghetti carbonara. Pretty good. I'm proud of that one. Yeah. So yeah, I can do some basic cooking. Huh. But it was about, okay, can I run and manage my life in this way? Uh, without a person living in here to bring me a glass of water. No, I do this thing. I make my bed. I vacuum the floor. I wash my three plates. I engage with all of this, in, this stuff in that way. And uh, you, you, you possibly uh, also read that I cut my own hair. I did. I did. That was How a, does that work? You just stand in front of the mirror and like... I use two mirrors. So there's the mirror in front and a little hand mirror. So you kind of look in this mirror and you hold another <laughs> mirror behind the head and... Uh, but you're never afraid that your hand is going to it's always a little uneven, if I'm honest. <laughs> for, for, fortunately, the cameras are always uh, slightly to one side. So if you get an exact dead-on shot and, and, and kind of me measure the sides, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's never quite right. And huh. often around the back, I've got these little, you know, one line that has gone a little too, too, too sharp. So there, 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 there will be spots around here and there. But since I wasn't on camera, it didn't matter. You know, if you're like, okay, fine, if you're a professional actor, you'll have someone to do the thing. 
I was not on camera. These were not relevant things. Every Sunday, I just kind of go, this is, and buzz. And you're done. And you're done. So, yeah, I, I, I started to uh, take more and more and more of those things onto myself and say, what do I need from the outside world and how much can I manage myself? Possibly uh, borderline pathological, uh, slightly overly self-reliant. Uh, there, 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 there is there, such a thing. There is such a thing. Uh, if, 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 if I'm being honest, this might be a bit of a red flag with me. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not great at accepting external help. But now, Imran, you are in a relationship. So how does it change? Is she okay with three plates? <coughs> <laughs> The, the, it, it's, an, it's an ongoing negotiation. <laughs> <laughs> I want five. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So that, that, that is the ongoing thing of, you know, can, can we get more plays? I'm like, okay, how, how many do we really need? I may do a three. Can we do with five? Six? Okay. Three for you, three for me. What's the... So <clears throat> that, that, that is the ongoing, uh, ongoing negotiation that, 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 that we are uh, figuring out <laughs> as, we, as we move into a new place. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, Imran... Lekha's also an actor, an artist. She's written lyrics. When there are two artists in a relationship, do you automatically become like professional bouncing boards for each other? Oh, uh, yeah. It just it, happens. It, 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 look, you, I mean, you're, 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 you're also married to a movie guy. Yeah. <clears throat> it's hard to get but us But I'm to not an artist. <clears throat> it's hard to get us to shut up about movies. <laughs> this is true. You know, like I... <clears throat> Like I, I, I don't stop. Yeah. So it, it, it is. Uh, yeah. That, 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 that is a thing. So I, I am always launching into a thing of, you know, in such and such film when this is the case, and she, she, being an artist, is always with the idea of suppose there is a tree with a light and a. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's fun. It is entertaining. <laughs> but, I, I, I would say yeah. If you, if you. Spend a bit of t uh, spend too much time hanging around with movie people, it very quickly gets tiring because we don't talk about anything else. <laughs> you know, um, Amitabh Bachchan, who also, of course, famously took the famous actor, the famous actor who also famously took a break, right? Oh yeah, for right, five right, years yeah, yeah. he took a break, um, and he did say afterwards, uh, Imran, that he thought it was a mistake because he said when I came back everything had changed. Uh, do you look back? Uh, in any way, thinking that, okay, what if it hadn't panned out like this? I don't, uh, you know, before I became an actor, I had already lived many lives. I, I didn't grow up in Bombay. I didn't grow up in one place. Uh, <clears throat> I, I've, I've bounced around a lot of cities, countries, different schools. Uh, <clears throat> I've had some, my, 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 my schooling was unusual. Uh, I've, I've been to a number of very unorthodox, non-traditional schools. Uh, I spent some of my formative years from age 11 to 15 in a Gurukul, mm. uh, literally without electricity. We lit kerosene lamps every night. That's how we had light. We farmed, we grew our own food. We got water from a stream. We chopped firewood. Uh, as such, I have always had the sense that life is kind of bigger. I cannot be a unidimensional person. I am a Bollywood actor and the sum total of my personality and my life are bound up in that. I've acted in 12 films professionally. Now, Mr. Bachchan has acted in a few more. Just uh, a few. <laughs> many, many other actors have acted in many, many more. Yeah. A lot of people have acted in less than 12 films. I'm already ahead of half the population of the country in that, in that way. So it's, it's not a thing. It's not how many films did you act in and how much money did sure. they earn. Maybe there's seven, maybe there are 12, maybe there's 24. Who knows? But what do you want from life? Uh, and for me, there was always a sense of, if I really, 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 really want to, 
I'll find a way back. I'll find a way to do a thing. Maybe I don't have to be an actor always. Maybe I can be a director. Maybe I'll be a cinematographer. Maybe I'll be a production designer. Who knows? Maybe I make films in another way. Maybe I make independent films. Maybe I... However it is, the idea of unless I am following this one track, somehow you are not maximizing. I, that's that's not a thing for me. I I don't uh, I don't consider that. Uh, for me, it is what do I want to do in my life? Mm. And there are there there is going to be a whole number of uh, a, a large number of things that have nothing to do with the film industry. Yeah. And being able to separate those things is something that I've not I've not encountered that a lot. Uh, most people have a sense of you can't fall behind in the race. Yeah, it is a race. Is it? I don't know. I don't. I, I you never, don't feel. That. I have never seen it as that. Yeah. I've I've never considered it to be a race. Uh, more and more and more, I'm, and this is not restricted to the film industry. I I I I'm feeling that this is symptomatic of us generally in the world. No one has a sense of enough. Wherever you are, whatever you are, whatever the thing is, the ability for someone to look into their bowl and say, I have enough. We have lost this thing. There is a greed for anything and everything, but no one ever is able to say, I have enough. Thank you. I consider that not only do I have enough, I have an abundance here. I I I have I I've I've been I've been triply blessed, I think, in, in, in my life that in so many, so many, so many ways I consider that I have more and more and more yeah. than most. Can that not be enough? The the, the idea somehow that, you know, okay, so, so in 10 years I haven't made a film, but I've acted in 12 films, at least a half dozen of them are films that we remember to this day. How many people get that? That in and of itself, say, okay, I've acted in less films than Amitabh Bachchan. Then I guess I'm a loser. I don't know. I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm able to say this is enough here. If I were to get another chance and make another film, oh my God, that's... Yet another blessing. After that, if I were to make another film, yet another, are you kidding? Every bit of it is a plus. Yeah. Absolutely. Not a lot of people get to do this thing. Yeah. This, 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 this thing that we, that we love so much. There are many, many people in the world who love it just as much, maybe more, who, who never get half a shot, who never, never get close. The idea of being ungrateful for this thing, I mean, <laughs> there's a lot. Imran, is there something you do daily for your mental health? Uh, it is kind of a conscious presence. Uh, summed up in the, 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 the mantra is, be here now. Mm. We are more and more in multiple places at the same time. I'm physically here. Half my mind is on uh, on Instagram. Half my mind is on the WhatsApp messages that I have not yet responded to. The things, the things. We are in so many places. Uh, and there is so much of that residue that we then take into all engagements. And... For me, personally, I feel that I am particularly prone to that. Uh, I, I have a very uh, narrow bandwidth. I'm not able to multitask at all. Uh, so if I have some external residue, it becomes difficult and I can very quickly become derailed in whatever it is that I'm trying to do. So for me, what I've become more conscious of in recent years is that there will be perhaps a gut reaction that comes from a, an, ang uh, an anxiety-driven place. 
uh, and I have to step in with a kind of intellectual override and say, okay, shh, calm down. You're feeling anxious right now, but look around for a second. Where are you? What is your physical space? What are your actual circumstances? What is actually happening? To what extent is your anxiety warranted and justified? To what extent is it an, a, a, a residue that is just there? So that kind of conscious stepping down of, okay, shh, calm down. Take a moment, take a pause, take a breath, think about where you are, see what, what is happening. That is uh, what I do 20, 30 times a day to kind of de Recognizing your own responses. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there is a part of me that tends to react from anxiety. And there is the part that goes, calm, take breath, calm down, take breath. That's, that's something that I still have to do uh, every day. Okay, I have to ask, are you in a bus tire while I'm working on a spy series? Uh, so that was the very, very first thing out of the gate that we started talking about. Uh, this is back in July of last year. Uh, Abbas called me up uh, out of the blue. I was, I was on vacation in San Francisco. Uh, and he called me up and said, hey man, it's been forever. And I've written this amazing thing and it was a really cool story uh, and you know let's 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 do this thing together and we had started the conversation uh, and the project was in early development at hotstar this was before the acquisition uh, and then in the in the latter part of uh, of last year i guess hotstar got amalgamated into geo yeah and somewhere within all of that stuff, uh, that project fell by the wayside. Uh, and you were going to be a spy? Uh, yeah. I want to see this. You know that all things said and done, uh, now ultimately that, 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 uh, that, that kind of fell into limbo and I think is, it, it, it doesn't look like it will uh, be, be resurrected. All things said and done, uh, I'm kind of glad that that ended up not coming up, coming together. Why? I don't want to play a character who solves problems with a gun. I have a sense about where cinema is these days, globally. There is a glamorization and a... Uh, a fetishization and a sexualization of violence that makes me uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. And this is not to say, look, I've, I've grown up loving action cinema, you mm. know. Uh, for, uh, for me, when I was, when I was uh, in, in my early adolescence, my heroes were Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Indiana you know, Jones, Indiana right? Indiana Jones. Yeah. Well, Indiana Jones a little bit earlier. Mm. But going to the 90s, these were the stars. So I've, I've grown up loving action cinema. To this day, I love Jackie Chan. I mean, this is... Uh, there is a way to portray violence. Uh, this is not a, and this is not a morality thing. It is about violence and action are... It, it, it is a language within cinema. But when we communicate it and when we, uh, when we portray it in films, there is a way to do it where you feel the weight of it. Yeah. Uh, and the way we do it is there are no consequences. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the Joker film, which came out a couple of years ago, uh, you, you must have seen yeah, it. Yeah, Joaquin Phoenix. Yes. Yeah. There's a scene in that where uh, he attacks a guy suddenly with a, with a knife and stabs him to death and I remember watching that scene play out and it was shattering and brutal and horrifying and I was shaken at yeah. the end of it when that scene played out I said oh my god this because that's what violence is if you see someone stabbed to death you would be shaken it would be and we've started making films where you know heroes will kind of just go in and boom 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 shoot seven people in the head and their heads will explode. 
to a mu- to to music and there is like a they, they 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 make it cool and sexy and it makes me uncomfortable and you don't want to be that guy <clears throat> there's 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 enough of that yeah i don't want to play a character who solves problems with a gun well i hope you find something that you like so thank you i'm looking <laughs> <laughs> we are very very excited and so lot out imran <laughs> Working on it, working on it. <laughs> Listen, before we end, we want to show you. Uh, we just talk to people on the street about you, and and we just want to show you what we got. When I say Imran Khan, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? His looks, definitely. Okay. Very nice looking. Janeji, Janeji. Yeah, from that chocolate boy rom com movies and nostalgia. <laughs> लाइट रॉन्ग को मार गए थे तो वैसे So he's he's like a fine man. Yeah, we had a crush on him, and I hate that he left films. Why did he stop making that those love stories, cheesy love stories? I love those movies. I think he is very underrated. You are very cute. Your acting is perfect. Uh, you should join again the industry. <laughs> <laughs> you are very cute, Imran. <laughs> Thank you, people. <laughs> <laughs>